maybe I gave you one, maybe. No. Okay. Hang on. I'll get you one in that. <clears throat> um. Okay. So, um, just by looking at the equation, let's go ahead and identify that because x squared is negative, then our parabola is going to be facing this way. So we've got a maximum point for our vertex. So go ahead and plug in that equation into your y equals negative x squared minus 9x minus 93 over 4. Uh, now, the neat thing is, if you really wanted to, you could adjust your window because they give you they give you a graph on your paper and the, the uh, parabola is going to fit on that graph. They give it to you on purpose. It's going to fit in that window. So if you wanted to change your window to the window that they have on your paper, uh, you can. But you really don't have to. Okay, We just need to identify a few things. So the first thing that I start by identifying is what is my vertex? Okay, we've already identified that it's a maximum. So let's actually find the coordinates of that maximum. Second trace, maximum is number four. <clears throat> I don't know where your cursor is, but I gotta move mine over quite a bit to get to the left side of that maximum. Press enter, move to the right side of the maximum, press enter, press enter again. So it gives us negative 4.5, negative 3 for our vertex or for our maximum. Okay, your vertex is either going to be a maximum or a minimum. So you can identify it with either term up. You either call it the vertex or call it the maximum. The axis of symmetry, think about it. <clears throat> it's talking about where is the parabola symmetric. So that cuts right through the middle of it. It's your x coordinate. The axis of symmetry is the x coordinate. So you write it x equals negative 4.5. x equals negative 4.5 is your axis of symmetry. The y intercept, I don't need the calculator for it. The y intercept is always the constant on the end. So the x is always 0 because we're talking about the y intercept, so it has a y coordinate. It does not have an x. And it's negative 93 over 4. Now, x intercepts. Does this function ever cross the x axis? No, it doesn't. So, this is an example of one that doesn't have any x intercepts. You just write none. Okay, just write none. But if it did have x-intercepts, remember how we would find them. We go to second trace, and it's number 2, 0, because that's where the function equals 0, where the y-coordinate is 0. So that's how we find the x-intercepts. And we do the same thing that we do with the maximum. Left bound, right bound, <clears throat> and then we find it. Okay? All right. Domain and range. What's the domain for any quadratic? All real numbers. Very good. All real numbers. Automatically. Every single time. All real numbers. And I do want you to write it every time because I really just want that to kind of get ingrained in your memory. The domain is all real numbers. Or a quadratic. Always. Okay? <clears throat> now the range, that's talking about the y values. So now we use the y value of our vertex. But we've got to decide, is it less than... Or is it greater than? Do we have y values less than negative 3 or do we have y values greater than negative 3? Less than. So we write that y is less than or equal to negative 3. I think for some reason I realized afterwards I was putting an infinity on the left side. You really don't need that part. Okay? You really don't need that part in um, inequality notation there. Um, but if you put it in interval notation that I showed you yesterday, you do need the negative infinity if you're putting it in interval notation. But if you're just using the inequality, okay, and I'm fine with this, I just don't want this to throw you for a loop if it shows up on the final exam. Um, but this is easier to think about. All my y values are less than, they are below negative 3. 
So really, it's pretty simple. After you find your vertex, you're going to use the x coordinate for the axis of symmetry. Okay, you might even remember that because the axis has an x in it. Might help you remember. And then you're going to use the y coordinate for the range because the main talks about the y axis. So you use the y coordinate for the range. So hopefully those two things will kind of help you remember which part do I use for which. Okay? Does that make you feel a little bit better? Okay, hopefully so. Alright, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to keep working on these. You may need to go back to some that you did yesterday and maybe correct a little bit. I didn't I didn't grade them or anything. I just wanted to kind of look and see how far y'all got and, and how y'all felt about it. Uh, most people were, were right there in the middle. I need a little bit more help. Uh, so hopefully hopefully this did it for you. Okay? So we're gonna work on that till about 8:30. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about that.